A few days ago, I watched Passing, and this movie was incredible to say the least. And now I really badly want to give my explanation of the ending, how the ending played out, how the ending can be interpreted, and the symbols and themes in the movie that led up to the ending being so thematic and meaningful. And I have to quickly say, I feel like I could connect with this movie on a personal level because it had a lot to do with my personal background and my lineage and my family when it comes to varying African complexions. To break it down, we're going to use two themes. One, liberty versus luxury, where we'll discuss the intro cafe scene, Claire's life versus Irene's life, their mutual curiosity, passing as white, and Claire's husband's racism. And two, comfort of ignorance. We'll discuss Claire's ignorance, Irene's ignorance, Brian's emphasis of the lynchings, Irene's hands shaking, Claire's flirting with Brian, and the ending with Claire in the window. And how it all relates to theme number one and two, and much more. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, liberty versus luxury. The film starts off with Irene visiting this upper-class white cafe. We notice that Irene is powdering her face while cautiously keeping an eye on the three or four white people around her. And at this moment, we realize that Irene is powdering her face to pass as a white person. And once this reality registers in our brains as viewers, we immediately see Claire directly staring at Irene. And this is probably my favorite shot in the whole movie. Because in this moment, Claire represents the extremely shocking reality of what Irene always had the opportunity of becoming. It's almost as if Claire in this shot is a personification of Irene's curiosity, looking her directly in the face and refusing to look away. We soon learn that Claire is an old childhood friend of Irene's, who is full on living a life of passing as a white woman, and is married to a white man. And I want to expand on this idea here, because I think this intro scene establishes the basis and biggest theme of the entire film. Each of these two characters represent a different path that both of them had the opportunity to take. Both characters are black women of a lighter complexion. Claire has decided to pass as white. Irene has decided to continue as black. And as we experience the life of these characters throughout the film, we learn that there are advantages and disadvantages that make both women very curious of one another. Let's start with Claire. Claire represents luxury. Her life at first glance appears to be the better life, as she dines at fine restaurants, wears more expensive clothes, and stays in more luxurious rooms. And Irene's curiosity in this life is demonstrated in how she is passing as a white woman just for the day. She is exploring her curiosity curiosity of being respected and treated fairly for once. Claire has escaped the marginalization and mistreatment that Irene has to face every day. And this lingers with Irene after reuniting with Claire as she keeps returning to the idea of switching the boys out of their school and leaving their community. There's this comfort and privilege to Claire's life that Irene has always dreamed of having. Irene, on the other hand, represents liberty. And I know immediately you might be like, how? How does she represent liberty when she doesn't even have the freedom to visit a white restaurant or walk safely through a white community? This is certainly true, but I 100% believe that Irene is way more of a free woman than Claire. And this concept has so much to do with the ending, and I feel like I can best explain this through the scene with Claire's husband. Claire's husband, John, introduces himself to Irene shortly after Claire and Irene meet in the cafe. And right away, John just starts dropping the N-word in the most wicked way it hurts to hear. Using the N-word, he playfully describes how Claire is becoming like a black person as her skin darkens in the summer. There is clearly a deep underlying hatred for black people that John has. And black is what Claire truly is. Her own husband is expressing his deep hatred for his wife right in front of his wife, and he doesn't even know it. Surely, Irene doesn't have Claire's luxury and privilege. However, she doesn't have to be associated with and legally tied to people who would have looked down upon her and looked down upon her people. Irene also has the freedom to express her culture and true identity as a black person amongst her family and friends. Essentially, both characters remind each other of what they could have been, which is why Irene passes as white for a day and why Claire is dying to see Irene once again and relive the life that is truly her, which brings me to theme number two, comfort of ignorance. 
As said before, both Claire and Irene face different disadvantages based on the decision that each of them have made. For Claire, she loses her culture, roots, and character. For Irene, she suffers from mistreatment, underpayment, and risk of safety. And the possible major consequences of their choices are severe, to say the least. Irene runs the risk of her children being treated even worse than her for their darker complexion. They could even be injured or killed just for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Claire runs the risk of her white friends and family family finding out that she is actually a black woman. She herself could certainly be hurt or even killed for keeping such a secret. But the most interesting thing here is, both women use ignorance to be at peace with these life-threatening harsh realities. While Brian tries to tell the boys about the innocent black men being harassed, abused, and lynched, Irene insists he stop talking. But the earlier the boys know, the better, so they can stay safe. And we get a taste of the upcoming hardships for the boys when one is called the n-word at school. Irene, however, would rather ignore the idea of her boys having such brutal things possibly happen to them, so she somewhat pretends that it's not real. It's this childish approach of ignorance to a harsh reality that provides comfort. This is why Brian says the very powerful line, I don't understand how someone as intelligent as you can be so stupid. And Irene knows this is true. Claire, unfortunately, does the same thing. Everything about her seems so happy and fulfilled, but it's pretty obvious in her mannerisms that she isn't being completely genuine. There's this painful lurking fear hiding behind her endearingly beautiful smile and charm. And Claire's ignorance is another unwanted yet unavoidable reflection of Irene's ignorance, very similarly to that early shot in the cafe. And Irene gets nervous whenever she's holding in these true emotions in the face of her harsh reality. This causes her hands to shake throughout the film. When her son is learning about the lynchings, her hands shake and she forgets what's cooking on the stovetop. Her hands also shake when she sees Claire getting more and more comfortable with the black community, while also getting way more comfortable and playfully flirty in the company of Brian. Brian for Claire is this idea of a black husband Claire could now never have. This fear and nervousness in the face of this reality causes Irene Irene to drop and shatter the teapot. And leading up to the end of the film, when Irene sees Claire reveling in the comfort of black company, specifically Brian's company, Irene is finally pushed to bring up the harsh reality that both of them have to face. Irene asks Claire, have you ever thought of what you'd do if John found out? And Claire says, I do what I want more than anything right now. I'd come up here to live in Harlem with you. And both Irene and Claire know that such a solution isn't realistic at all. And Irene knows that when the comfort of ignorance is taken too far, the consequences are soon to be life-changing, or better yet, life-threatening. And this is exactly what happens in the next scene, at the end of this film. John shows up at the party and finds out who Claire truly is. And the way the movie ends is actually very similar to the book that this movie is based on. In the novel, also titled Passing, John finds out Claire's black while Claire is near Irene. And Claire falls from a window and dies. And the author, Nella Larson, purposely makes it unclear how Claire fell from the window. So clearly, in this movie, we have three options. Option one, John pushed Claire out of the window out of anger for finding out she's a black woman. This interpretation is the most straightforward and certainly makes sense since John is a racist and is finding out the woman he has loved for years comes from a group of people he has hated for years. And if he was the one that killed Claire, it still makes sense that no one's accusing him when the police arrive because that would put their black lives in greater danger. Option two, Irene pushed Claire to end Claire's misery as quickly as possible. This is less straightforward, but also makes perfect sense since Irene is aware that Claire's future could be worse than death since John now knows. In option three, Claire jumped out herself to escape the anguish of having no sense of home. Claire would have to identify as black if she lived past this moment, and she really wouldn't have a place to belong. The black community may not be as accepting of her switch from black to white and back to black, which is understandable since she left the people that would have loved her for who she was. She also, like Claire, is aware of the hell that some of the white community would raise for her life of pretending to be white and fooling the white community for their privilege. She could move away, but still would be missing the community and home that feels so truly her. So overall, if you want to get technical by the way this is filmed, it looks most like option three is what happened. It looks like Irene was trying to save Claire, but Claire jumped herself before John got a chance to touch her. 
But personally, I think what the film is trying to do is greater than simply allowing us to choose our own ending. I think this movie is communicating to the audience that the circumstances for African Americans in the 1920s were so disenfranchised and disadvantaged that no matter how you chose to live, your life would always end up in misfortune, misery, tragedy, or death. Irene's boys will face racism. Irene will be underpaid. Brian will never have privilege. And when you try to avoid every disadvantage like Claire tried to, you will likely suffer the worst fate of all. There's no path to a happy ending, no matter which way you look at it. And most importantly, the prejudice that drives this system is all for no reason. And the very end of the film communicates this beautifully as the film fades into white before fading into black. Symbolizing that whether black or white or anything in between, there really is no difference. All right, this is my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts and ideas around passing and the ending. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.